Hello everybody, Mike here at Game From Scratch, and one common problem is that both developers trying to create a trailer or tutorial makers trying to show mobile usage run into is, how do you screen capture your mobile device? That is, how do I record in real time the gameplay or the action that's happening on my mobile phone or iPad or whatever? And the answer is there's a couple of different ways to do it. I'm going to show you basically three ways in this example. The first two I'm going to gloss over because I don't like either way. And then the third way is a commercial way, which basically involves spending money, what I am going to show you it because it is in fact my favorite way of doing things. So first off, I want you to be aware there are native ways of recording your device. So if you are an Android developer, the number one easiest way to record video of your device in action is using the um, Android Studio's ability. I'll throw this link down below so you know what I'm talking about. But basically through Android Studio, um, with a USB tether, and there's ways to do it via Wi-Fi as well, but I've never got them to work well, you can actually record your Android phone's um, screen. Same way is if you are on a Mac, the quickest way to actually go about doing this is by using the QuickTime player, which seems a little counterintuitive, but QuickTime has iOS recording built in. Now, I found this experience is terrible. Uh, it just flaked out, wouldn't record more than a couple of minutes at a time. Uh, your mileage may vary. It may be something to do with the fact that I'm using an ancient iPad or uh, MacBook Air, but you can basically, using built-in QuickTime, record via a lightning cable tethered to your device. And again, neither experience is excellent and you run into the challenge and here's where ultimately I decided, oh, to hell with this, I'm going to buy something, is what happens when you want to record um, iOS footage on a Windows machine. So if you don't have a, a Mac with QuickTime installed, you're kind of out of luck. And that's where Reflector 3 comes in. Reflector 3 is available from airscrolls.com. I'll throw this link down below. You see, it's 15 bucks USD, which is in my world... Uh, I can save enough time not screwing around with other stuff that I find this purchase worthwhile. And this one basically allows you to support multiple screen types on multiple devices. And it does it very, very well, which is what we're about to see it in action. And if you're wondering, no, there is no, I've not been product placement or endorsed to make this post in any way. I'm just sharing an application I actually use for doing this stuff. I get asked every time I capture mobile footage, what did you use to capture mobile footage? And what I use, frankly, is a reflector. So when you install and purchase reflector it comes up and looks something like this so now here is the runtime and you can now with this window running you can connect to it using your device now first off I'll connect using my phone uh, this is a Google Pixel phone you're not gonna see anything immediately because well I'm not connected yet but all you do is you go into Chromecasting and you pick the connection and you see it just hit and there I am I now connected so that is my phone in real time you can see it right there. The performance is pretty solid. There's a lot of customization you can do with this, but the cool thing is, so I'm going to change the orientation on my phone. You see it changes on screen. And then back. Um, so all I do to do this, to connect to Reflector, is I go down to the options, like so, and I just pick the cast right now. You can see I'm casting to Tartarus. Well, that is really all you need to do. You'll notice up here there is a config um, window that pops up, and you can do things like change the way that the phone skin looks. You can change the way it scales, keep it from rotating. You can make it always be on top like it is right now, or you can go in a full screen display, and it'll have black bars everywhere else. I can grab the title by the edge like that. Now, the cool thing, though, with Reflector 3 is now let me just bring up my iPad over here. Oops, I just rotated my phone. Stop that. All right, unrotate. There we go. All right, so let me just close that window down, drag this guy over here, and now what I'm doing is I am on my iPad, and I, I'll show you this process later as well, but basically, I'm asked for a security code on iPad. You can turn that off, by the way. So there I am. I am now connected with my iPad as well. The way you do this is just via screen mirroring. So. To show you, you just go basically drag all the way up like so, and then you'll see right here, you have your screen mirroring, and that's it. And then now we are basically connected to my iPad. And again, the, um, the feedback is pretty solid. My internet's extremely slow right now for some reason. But you see, as I'm moving, it moves quite well. Um, so that is how you can basically record devices, mobile devices very simply. Basically, is by spending 15 bucks on Air Squirrel or um, sorry, on Reflector from Air Squirrel. And there you see, you can also shift the orientation of your device and it updates accordingly. The cool thing is it actually does a pretty solid job of fitting your various devices on screen as you move them around. As you see, I'm doing 
right here. So that is basically showing a reflector for screen mirroring for mobile devices. It's easily worth the 15 bucks if you need to do this kind of stuff. Um, you need to have a decently fast Wi-Fi connection. Nothing outrageous, but you know there is going to be uh, some lag if your Wi-Fi is brutally slow or you have a weak signal. But other than that, you can capture some pretty solid um, uh, frame rate uh, video from it. And I'll just go back here, show you quickly the other settings that are available. So you see, you can come in here, um, you can set the airplay resolution. You can also have it do the recording for you. Uh, so you can go here and actually record it directly um, in various different recording modes and recording settings. Um, I don't think that really matters. And then as you see, the way this is actually working is um, the reflector client is basically turning into an AirPlay and a Google Cast and a MirrorCast uh, device receiver. So um, anything that supports uh, AirPlay, MirrorCast, or uh, Google Cast can now cast to um, the reflector app. And, and then actually they will include uh, older school um, Samsung phones, Samsung Galaxy 6 and earlier, I believe, I'll use MirrorCast built in. So it will support them as well. It's it's a cool, solid application. I definitely recommend it. And uh, yeah, so if you do need to do some screen capture, now do keep in mind, there are ways to do it for both. Uh, here, let me just shut that down so these are out of the way because it is always on top at the moment. All right, so once again, if you need to, you can use Android Studio to do screen captures of Android. You can use QuickTime to do recordings on a Mac that's tethered via lightning cable, or you can just say screw it all and use Reflector 3. And again, peace of mind wise, I just find it works flawlessly. So little tools like this, you know, especially when they're affordable, I definitely, um, I definitely recommend it. Now, if you're interested, you can try it out uh, for I think seven days. Uh, it will show a watermark on screen at all times, so you will have to purchase it if you want to use it for a video recording or anything. But it's definitely one of those little tools that I find somewhat invaluable in my toolbox. So if you're looking to do some screen capturing, those are the three ways I know of to do it easily. You know, Android Studio, QuickTime on Mac, or you just go ahead and buy a reflector and have a very easy time of it. All right, that's it for now. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.